it had a u-joint failure i'll show you how that failed but first i wanted to show how these transmissions work the design is not unique to john deere on the hydrostat portion just about any hydrostat transmission works very similar it has a front mounted diesel engine that spins a drive shaft and then that drive shaft is connected to the front of the gearbox and transmission would normally be attached right here to a stub shaft. We also have some linkage from the pedals that push these rocker arms on the side of this. So when you push the forward pedal or the reverse pedal, it moves this rocker either forward or reverse. The hydrostatic drive unit consists of two major portions. You have the pump portion and then the drive portion. And they look very similar, but there are some differences between them. The pump portion is what is connected to your engine and is always spinning at engine RPMs and it's done through the shaft and it spins this cylinder which has seven pistons inside of that. They're just very tight tolerance fit, metal on metal. There's no rings or seals. Um, that's what pumps the fluid on the pump portion is these pistons as they move up and down on this cylinder and as they wear out and get older the tolerance between the cylinder and the piston starts to have increasing slop and that causes it to not be as good of a seal so that's when your hydrostat drives start getting weak that's usually the cause of it in this case this tractor is almost brand new it has only 200 hours on it so these parts are all obviously in extremely good shape just because it has almost no age on it yet and the uh so the the pump cylinder is always spinning and it rides on these bearings and races which sit down inside here, which is the swash plate. The swash plate changes angle based on the pedal linkage. It, so it basically rocks on a pivot. And if you're pushing the pedal forward, it'll push this plate into the forward direction. And the further you push the pedal, the more it increases the angle. And the same is for reverse. If you push the pedal in reverse, it pushes it the opposite direction. What that does is as these pistons are spinning around, if there's no angle on that swash plate, the height is the same all the way across so they don't change from one side to the next. So the, they're not moving at all as they spin all the way around in a circle. As you start to push that pedal, say you wanna go forward, the more you push that pedal forward, when the cylinder spins to this side, they're being pushed down and as it spins back to this side, they rise back up. So they're going up and down as this spins in a circle. The more you increase the angle, the more up and down movement there will be on each of these pistons. That causes fluid to be pumped through these slots on the back of the uh, drive pump. The, uh, that pushes hydraulic fluid either in or out of these two passages depending on which way you're pushing the pedal. If you're going one direction, it's going to pull fluid from this side and push it out this side. And if you reverse the direction, it's going to do the opposite. That flow is then immediately sent to the drive pump or the drive motor. And so the drive motor is in the same case in this case for this tractor. Uh, some equipment has the drive motor mounted separately, especially skid steers, um, a lot of like commercial grade zero turn mowers, that sort of stuff they will use hydraulic hoses to run to the drive motors, which are located down by the wheels typically. In this case, in this tractor, the drive motor is just directly across from the pump. That flow is transmitted over to the motor, and this is a very similar setup. It's a cylinder with seven pistons, also spring-mounted the same way. You can open them up and see they got a spring inside there, just like the pump has. And it is also coupled to a shaft. This is your output shaft that goes to the rest of your transmission. The gearbox on this motor, or the gearbox on this tractor, or on the case of some zero turn mowers, that will go straight to the wheel. The, uh, the way the drive motor side works is it has a fixed angle permanently mounted into the case. So it might be hard to see with this camera, but that is not a neutral position. That has a, a set angle instead of a swash plate that's a fixed angle plate. So if there's no flow, this does not move because there's no fluid coming in or out of the drive motor. If there is flow coming into the drive motor, 
it will force it to turn in one way or the other depending on the direction of the flow. And it will turn for as long as there is flow. As the flow increases, the speed that it turns will also increase. So that makes it a hydraulic drive motor. It will move whenever there is flow and it will move in the direction of the flow. One of the nice benefits to a hydrostatic transmission is that these drive motors also act like a brake when there is no flow or as you're reducing the flow even. You may have noticed if you've ever driven a hydrostatic lawnmower or any, any other piece of equipment, as you remove your foot from the uh, pedal telling it to go forward, it automatically starts slowing down. And even if you're on a hill, going downhill, it will come to a stop very quickly because the fluid, once the pump stops pushing fluid into the motor, the fluid hydrolocks into these cylinders and it can't move or turn without forcing fluid through the small tolerances of these pistons. Sometimes they will still have a brake. That's typically for like a parking brake or for emergency situations where something may be broken. So the reason I don't think this is a good design, and apparently there's been a lot of other failures just like this with this particular tractor, there is a drive shaft that runs between the engine and the transmission like I showed you earlier and it has two U-joints in that drive shaft. They are greasable U-joints, and you can see the Zerk fitting right there. The problem is, is that they are very hard to get to, they're not accessible, and they need to be greased very, very frequently. I don't know if it's due to these U-joints losing their grease, not being sealed very well, or if it's due to high temperatures. I'm not sure the reason that they need to be greased so frequently. But the problem comes from that they're not very accessible. This one is inside all this cowling down inside between those metal plates and it goes right to the flywheel, kind of under the, I guess what you would call the bell housing on the engine. And there is an access cover on this side that you can use to get to that. But to get to the access cover, you still have to remove all of your plastic shrouding, which, in order to move your plastic shrouding, you also need to move your floor pan. So you got to remove several body components. Now the rear one also has a Zerk fitting on it, and it goes right in front of that transmission like I was showing you earlier. Now right here, it looks like it's real easy and accessible. Normally, you have your floor pan on there with all your pedals and various controls for your height adjust for your mower deck, you know, various stuff like that. So it's not real quick and simple to remove that floor pan to get at that grease fitting. Now you can get at the grease fitting on this one from below if you remove your mower deck. For whatever reason, these require grease very frequently. And I don't know for sure why that is, but if you don't grease them, these will fail and they will fail pretty catastrophically. In this case, this mower, this tractor, only has 200 hours on it, which seems extremely early for this to even be dry and not have grease in it. But for whatever reason, it doesn't. And from what I'm reading, reading online, the owner's manual for a lot of these models don't even tell you to grease that in the uh, maintenance schedule. I guess later on they added that to the service schedule and it, they want you to grease those U-joints every 50 hours under normal usage and I think every 10 or 20 hours under severe usage. So anybody that has the uh, John Deere 2320, you'll want to make sure you uh, check those U-joints, make sure they're in good shape and keep them greased. You definitely don't want these to fail. When they do, it's not a cheap fix and it's not an easy fix.